All right, well, the drama between Twitter and Elon Musk continues to grow today as the social media giant announces a poison pill plan in response to his takeover bid. So what the heck is a poison pill plan and why does Twitter need it? Let's bring in Fox Business Analyst Phil Flynn to help explain. Good morning to you, Phil. How's it going? Good morning. I'm doing great. You know, I, I think the answer to your question right there, why do they need it to save their jobs at the board? That's I think what they're trying to do right now. But what is it? What is a poison yeah, pill? Yeah, explain that because I heard that too. What, and I was like, what is it? Are, all right. Well, basically what happened, Elon Musk offered them a really good amount for their company, you know, uh, 43 million barrels and $54.20 a share, which at the time was almost $10 a share more than the stock was actually trading for. Uh, but what will happen when you get an unfriendly bid, members of the board of administration will do what they can to try to make that bid look more unattractive. One of that way, one of those ways is to issue more shares that they have in backup. And so what the plan was that they were going to allow members of the board to buy more shares at a discount, thereby diluting everybody else's share of stocks. There was more stock in there, the stock's worth less. Um, and they hope it makes it less attractive for Mr. Musk, who's going to have to pay an extra premium then uh, for the shares. Um, now, that might save the board's job, and it may dissuade uh, Mr. Musk. But at the end of the day, shareholders are going to be upset because essentially they're making everybody's investments worth less. And so I think there will be a lot of people that will be upset that they're trying to dilute the ownership and the value of this company. Well, it's one thing to be upset, but will this result in legal matters if those shareholders decide to band together and sue the board? Very possible. You know, I mean, the shareholders, you know, own a big part of the company. In fact, a uh, former CEO of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, emailed that the board doesn't even own that many shares. And, and so did Elon Musk. So, you know, uh, it really seems that this is more not in the best shareholders' interest, but in the interest of preserving their control of Twitter and control of the truth. And, and that's the biggest issue here. Elon Musk is looking at Twitter and saying, listen, you ban the, the leader of the free world. You, you know, you covered up the Hunter Biden situation. You did all these things, you know, but he's for free speech. And so he's more coming into this, not as an investment, but more of a prefer uh, to save democracy and, and the freedom of expression. That's what I was going to ask you next. So what would Twitter look like if he took over? Would the former president get his page back? I don't think it could look any worse. And I, I do think the president would get his page back. Uh, you know, I don't know why you can ban the president of the United States, but the president of Iran can, can continue to tweet. So there's a real disconnect between the way that they lay out rules. You know, Voltaire once said, you know, I, I might not like what you say, but I'll defend to the death your right to say it, right? And, and nobody wants hate speech on the website, but when you have real political discourse that's being shut down, and, you know, I can look at many equations where Twitter has shut down stories that, you know, they claimed were false, but turned out to be true. And so you really don't want to withhold information in, in a democracy. You might not like what they're saying, but if it's true, uh, it needs to be said. All right, Fox Business Analyst Phil Flynn, always breaking things down. Thanks very much for giving us that perspective and telling us what the poison pill is. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye. All right, 837.